I'm an architect. My work is to design spaces for people to live. But it is not the only potential of architects. Today, I'm going to speak three bridging ideas. Bridging between people and architecture, bridging between people and professionals, and bridging between professionals. Architecture is different from art. Architecture definitely it has own users. And everybody is related to architecture. You know, everyone needs a space to live, work, study, and take a rest, right? But not so many people talk about the pleasure of architecture. Why not? Because it's difficult? I understand. Sorry. We architects often write difficult comments with difficult words. Because it is not something that is familiar with, I understand. There are not so many people who have had an opportunity to be told how to appreciate architecture. One day, I happened to see the demolition of one contemporary building. I loved the building very much. It was one of the prides that I had about my city. I was very shocked. By this incident, I realized how important it is to share the value of architecture with the general public. Because even though we professionals feel sorry about such a loss, without public sympathy, the same thing will be repeated again and again in the future. By the way, have you experienced this before? A little comment made you enjoy a bottle of wine in front of you more. A little information made you appreciate a piece of pottery in your hands more. These experiences open your, open your door to enjoy something you are not familiar with. So I decided to start tours to introduce buildings which Fukuoka citizens often pass by and see in their daily lives with easy-to-understand explanations. Our tour was held three days only every August from the year 2009 to 11. We introduced many buildings, such as office buildings, bank headquarters, museums, uh, elementary school, even a subway station. We introduced many interesting episodes, such as Guess how many kinds of vegetation have grown up on this huge roof? Do you know? Do you know where the orange, unique color of stone covering the huge wall is from? Do you know? India. Many of them said, oh, to know about architecture is so fun. This boy, Fukuyama Ryunosuke kun at the center, he joined a lot of tours. When he, we first met him, he was only 12 years old, and now soon becoming a high school student. He's a great lover of architecture now, and going to study architecture at the university. In 2012, we did parent-child tour during summer vacation. Children are great. They immediately memorize names of architects, follow their concepts, and understand the structure of the city. Through these tours, I believed a bridge between people and architecture is being built. So today, after TEDx Fukuoka, you stepped out from this building, and soon you will see the building we made a tours about. So if you join our next tour, I promise you, you will enjoy Fukuoka much more than before. Last fall, we founded a non-profit organization to continue and develop our activities. We are going to make various tours, lectures, and workshops. But not only that, we are going to develop a smartphone application to help people to enjoy architecture. Oh, nice building. Who designed this? You know, you may have a smartphone, right? 
Oh, nice lighting design. Who is a lighting designer? What a nice material. What company produces this? We, hope, we are hoping our activities inspire people to share the value of design and fertilize the soil for future design to blossom by spreading good local designers, contractors, manufacturers. So, you may be able to find who designed your favorite restaurant. Could it be a bridge between people and professionals? So now, may I show you some projects I design? But today, I'm not going to show you typical architecture, such as housing complexes, commercial facilities. Actually, I design lots of those buildings. Fukuoka citizens must recognize this bus running around in a city, right? <laughs> I work with five designers together. Uh, graphic designers, product designer, and planner. This bus company carries more than 2,000 buses, so we considered buses as movable furniture in our urban scape. After this bus project finished, we got another bus design project, which was small community bus for small town. And we completed it. And after that, I was asked to design this. Do you know what this is? It's a bus stop. <laughs> it's a becoming a gathering spot for children as well. This is more like a product design scale rather than architecture scale, because this is only six square meters. <laughs> but to make a place for people is architect's work. It's not the matter of scale or size. This bridge taught me how tough it is to work with civil engineers. But 13 years, 13 years were long enough for me to learn their logic. And our collaboration created a beautiful bridge for people to enjoy coming, walking, exercising. So you know what this photo is. Yes, my bus is running on my bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may think, I'm not a typical architect. You may think I'm too diverse, but architecture includes many fields, such as engineering, technology, of course, history, psychology, philosophy, and many more. Architecture includes diversity. On the other hand, our townscape is not so beautiful like this. You know, very messy, uh, tall buildings right next to small houses, many electric poles, a lot of colorful signage on the building facade. Architects should collaborate with other professionals more to make this messy environment more beautiful by integrating fragmentary elements in urban space. Yes, architects could be binders between many different designs because we hold diversity. I titled today's presentation, Bridging, not because I designed the bridge, because I am happy to make a bridge to raise the value of design because I am happy to believe architects could be binders, bridges between professionals and society. So, what kind of value do you want to raise? What kind of bridge do you want to design? Thank you. <laughs>